بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد نواصل بإذن الله تعالى التعليق وشرح كتاب الأخلاق وسير الإمام ابن حزم continue the comment on the book of الأخلاق the moral and the seer the conduct of الإمام ابن حزم رحمه الله تعالى he continue in العجب in العجب and how this disease and the illness of the heart can corrupt one's behavior, conduct, and really uh, corrupt the whole soul. Corrupt the whole soul because being, uh, you know, boastful, uh, a pride, uh, you know, of things who should not be pride of. Because as we have said, uh, in Islam always considering the virtue or the, the, the instinct we have, the, the base, the innate character that we have, to be looked from both, you know, sides. It has always a good side and a bad side. The anger, it has a good side when it is invested in the way of Allah. Uh, you know, hating in the sake of Allah, this is one of the uh, most fundamental, you know, rope of Islam, of Iman. The strongest rope of faith is to love in the sake of Allah and to dislike in the sake of Allah. Well, Bordu can be someone, you know, he has to have that anger, that anger to express the both. Someone will not be, you know, have Bordun and he's like smiley and, and cheerful. Yeah. So uh, the anger is good, but when the anger in the other side, the Prophet ﷺ gave the, uh, to the companion when he asked him for advice, قَالَ لَا تَغْضَبْ He told me, زِدْنِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ لَا تَغْضَبْ لَا تَغْضَبْ لَا تَغْضَبْ so the balance in Islam. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَصَتَ قَالَ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامٌ When they go to spend, they do not waste. They do not, you know, do like a lot of expenses, you know, you know, paying and wasting money. And they are not greedy to hold. And كَانُوا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا Like, you know, balance in that. وَلَا تَجَرْ بِصَلَاتِكَ وَلَا تُخَافَتْ بِهَا Do not out very loud in your salah and do not keep it secret to the way that you cannot listen to yourself, hear yourself. قَالْ وَبْتَغِ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلَ And seek between these two extreme a path. For the same for the prime, the same. So every innate things, for example, someone, there's a natural feeling to show off. So we should not condemn and you know, try to er eradicate such a thing because that thing is innate for you. But how to use it? How to use it? You know, as we said, the, the excessive pride that Abu Dujana was showing in the rows uh, of the Muslim army when they are facing the mushrikeen in Ghazwa Tuhad, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah loves this, you know, way. Allah hates the way that Abu Dujana is walking except in this, in this uh, uh, state or situation. But when we're talking about, that's why we said that to be proud and have one pride in the deen of Allah, in the oneness of Allah, that is actually how part of our ibad, part of our ibad, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, that pride, it is a pride of being, you know, uh, subhanAllah, servant of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eh? Uh, when Hassan ibn Thabit was, was uh, boasting, boasting, the uh, you know in, in a way in a positive way you know قال, uh, uh, وجبريلو, in the uh, poem he said قال, he was describing Badr قال, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we disgrace them and we had Allah is the highest commander and Jibreel is under our flag I mean this is this is to be happy of to be proud of you know Pride and pro, proud. So this is the balance. This is the balance. However, this illness, and we are in these less, this beautiful and blessed days, it is to take advantage to work on these things. You know, to not like just limit the, the, the worship that you do to, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the fast of those who have fasted, those who are making uh, qiyam, those who are making, you know, qiraat uh, Quran. 
Uh, always the believer need to go to the next step. The next step, not maybe, not we're not talking about in the amount of the of the action or the quantity of the action. You know, uh, if you do turaka, you better do like six. No, the turaka. If you dig deeper into the turaka, this turaka, subhanallah, can change you fully and completely inside. So uh, this is what uh, the scholar they say. Qala ma qalla wa dal. I mean, what it will be like small in small quantity, but you have a powerful impact in guidance, powerful impact in guidance. And Ibn Abbas, عنه, he was saying to stand the night and reading the whole Quran, it will not be comparable to stand the night with a few ayat of the Quran and two rak'ah, but with the very profound, you know, khushu' uh, and folks, different, because reciting the whole Quran in one night, it's like someone is in contest, in a contest trying to finish it. Therefore, there is no ta'amul, there is no tadabur, there is no reflection in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the objective of reading the book is at tadabur. Kitabun anzannahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati. So they reflect on its ayat. So let's check ourselves because, you know, to hold oneself uh, accountable, that's uh, from, you know, from al-muhasaba from al muraqaba uh, to check is your the, the pride that you have it's rightful pride or it's not it's something that someone it really turned to be an illness in the heart uh, and then this disease is going to change you know because uh, here ibn hazm uh, rahimahullah ta'ala talking about the negative pride which is like standing a kind of an obstacle to your path to humbleness and to humility and if you do not have humility then you will not be able to have truly khushu. You will not be able to have many of the great virtue. So uh, that leads you to the purification. The path to all this great and noble virtue is the humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To show humility, to be humble. If someone does not such have such a thing, you know, because the pride is very, you know, kind of sister of, of arrogance, of arrogance. Therefore, which is me like someone will be blind to the truth blind to the guidance you know and they people they think that they are guided and they doing great you know and maybe they are counting the you not know, not only their hasanat the rooms that they should have in the palace in the paradise yeah? <laughs> there's people they do that when subhanallah when they come in the day of judgment you know that they find subhanallah zero zero good deed it's very scary one. Well, that's the humble person. Someone is saying like he's very happy with all the deeds that he did. Uh, said, Alhamdulillah, I've been praying for all these years. I've been doing for all these years. And Alhamdulillah, I mean, everything is great. They say, Alhamdulillah, what, do you th what make you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your deeds? One of the salihin, he, he reached the age, I think, of... Uh, in the 50s or 60s or like or or farther than that and then he said if in these years i be alhamdulillah close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but, but if i had made only one sin every day then he computed them how many sins so when he get the numbers imagine you know let's say 70 or 80 years or 60 years you know or even lower you know younger age Every day, every year, you have 365 and multiply it. So he find like a number, scary number. He almost faint. <laughs> so what good deeds are you talking about? And then when someone makes the prayer, he said, Alhamdulillah, I prayed in the masjid, I will have 27 dollars. 27 dollars, are you sure? Who telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you for the salat? Because the salat is rewarded is only when you reach the third step of the folks in the salah the first is fulfilled its condition the second is to be striving into the salah to have the folks that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might raise it to the grade that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it to be a source of expiation of small sins that is done between salah and salah then when you want to fulfill its condition and fulfill your know, striving in it and you have the full khushu'ah that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start to reward you in, in the salah because the first level only fulfill the condition 
and you fulfill the pillars of it and the wajibat, Allah will accept it from you as not having to be blamed in the day of judgment. So when you can say, you know, Salat al-Maghrib of this day of Friday, you know, okay, you prayed it. You're not going to be reproached or blamed or accountable for it. Do I have it such a good thing? You know, someone said, what I'm going to get from this? He said, make say, alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to punish you on it. Because there is people who are praying all their life, and they come in the day of judgment, they're going to be punished for that prayer. لا تسيبوا عريضة المرء في الإسلام ولم تقبل له الصلاة. عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه. Someone grow great headed in Islam and no salat has been accepted from them. Because when they make wudu, they don't care if they to really they wash all the parts properly. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he saw like a part dry in the ankle of a person, قال ويل للعقاب من النار. Woe to this ankle from the hellfire. Why? Because there is no respect. When those two that are in the grave, you know, the Prophet, they were passing, These two graves, the people who are the owner of these graves, they are being punished, but they are not punished for something big. The person was Namima that, you know, talking ill about people in their back and making issues, you know. When they go to the bathroom, they are not cleaning themselves properly. Uh, therefore, some of, you know, subhanAllah, you didn't get to their clothes. And they come to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are not very careful, are you standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the pure clothes? With the pure body clean? Or those from the condition of the salah? So that neglectfulness caused the person subhanAllah to be banished. فَقَالَ مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَوْ عَشْرَ أَمْثَلُ Whoever who will bring the hasan, Allah will give you ten good rewards, ten times. However, the secret in this ayah, or the wisdom that requires to reflect, مَنْ جَاءَ who are going to bring it, which is me, like you're going to do the good deeds, protect it, maintain it, safeguard it, and keep it as is, fresh, good, beautiful, till you come to the Day of Judgment. But someone, subhanAllah, how many hasanat he raised them by the gossip, he raised them by this negative pride, he raised them by the showing off, he raised them with all the things. There is no hasana, but it has shortcoming in it. Shortcoming in it. One, uh, subhanAllah, he saw a dream. And uh, one of the salih. He was, subhanAllah, so his family, they were starving. Starving. And he didn't have any money. The only thing he has, he has a small house that he wanted to sell it. It was out of his inheritance. And then, subhanAllah, what, all what he have, about, you know, in this house is a meager price. And people, they want to really to, to what they call lowball him, as they say here. And then if you're going to sell this house, he's going to be, becomes homeless, him and his family. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, one that he was close to his father, his late father. He's very rich, passing by that uh, city or town. And to visit him and to have subhanAllah ihsan on the family of his own friend. So he, subhanAllah, he didn't find him. He left, you know, a pouch filled with money. When he came back and he was mahmoom, worrying, he said, who's, he told him his wife, this is a man came and he greeted you and said, so he was so happy, he remembered him. And he said, he gave you this gift. He said, alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know. So he, he went out and he took that money and he bought food. He bought food. So the food that he was like taking a tray with the, with the bread and the bread like one piece big of bread and has honey and things, you know. So subhanAllah and he was carrying it. When he was carrying it, there is a miskin, a poor person. He was looking at that bread like this, staring at it, you know, almost he's going to jump on it. So when he saw it, subhanAllah, he could not help it. He told him, take this is sadaq. And when he went back home, 
Ah, where the food? He said, Inshallah, you know, have sabr. So when he slept that day, which actually I'll give you the, the story upside down. When he slept that day, subhanAllah, um, he saw a dream. And then when he saw the dream, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you because of the sadaqah you have given. So he asked, what about the hajj, what about the siyam, what about this is the moral of the story. He said, come see your deeds. He said, he saw the hajj, and then when he lifted, it has, subhanAllah, a lot of, uh, subhanAllah, uh, uh, darkness in it. It's like something being uh, eaten from inside. It's like they have, like, subhanAllah, that uh, poison or things that, that degenerate the thing from inside. So it looks good, but when he lifted, he was, subhanAllah, it has a lot of, uh, of disease, let's say. It's like, imagine something, a body or, or a food, and you look at it and you see it, subhanAllah, that it's been spoiled. So he said, what's that? He said, all this is your action, but this is the shortcoming of it. So all this action could not help you to get the forgiveness. Because it has a lot of shortcomings. He said, I brought hajj. What he has inside the hajj. Those shortcomings is part of that deed. I brought salah, but what you have inside the salah? A lot of shortcoming in him. Then he realized how this sadaqah, single sadaqah, he did it with ikhlas, and out of need, he was in dire need, but he gave it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all your sins. And then when he came, as I told you, this is the story, I'll, I'll give it to you, uh, ups, uh, you know, backward. That's when he found, look, subhanAllah, he, there's no, no way. And he wants to sell his house and hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this man to give him all this money. And he said, subhanAllah, that sadaqah, not only was, you know, uh, its benefit was to have the forgiveness of his sins, but also, subhanAllah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, drive for him a rizq to his house. So these are important things. Uh, for all of us to be uh, aware of it, especially in these days, especially in these days, because whatever co contemplation, thinking you do, tadabbur, qira'ah, if you do it with the objective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put blessing in it, put a blessing in it, because these days are the celebration of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the celebration of the servitude to Allah, the celebration to be truly proud, and have that extreme pride that Allah is our Lord. You know, when you say, who is your Lord? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see it with a big heart. In the day of judgment, everybody, they will come. They say, you know, uh, what are you waiting for? He said, we are waiting for our God. Okay, go find your God. And they will be running, subhanAllah, in the darkness. I mean, only the believer, they have light. Uh, the light is, is either the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al ardu bi nuri rabbiha. Or the light of your own deeds that you had done in the dunya. So the people they will be in darkness say, Go find your Lord. They will be running, running. People they will be running, God, God, God. There is no God. Who's God? People they call Jesus, Jesus. Where is Jesus? Jesus is a servant of the day. He himself is going to be called to our account. Alayhi salam. People then they fall, subhanAllah, in the where they fall in hellfire. Because the flame of hellfire, after being lit for 3,000 years, turned into, into dark flame. Then they stayed only the Muhyiddin, the people who celebrate the oneness and observe the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their dunya, said, what are you waiting for? We said, we, said, we are waiting for Allah. <laughs> That's when you feel that you are so special. <laughs> but you are so special on that day where you sincere in the dunya. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the sign of a saq. Qala yawma yukshafu wa saq. We say, this is your Lord, make sujood. The people who were making sujood in the dunya sincerely with focus, observing the worship of Allah, they will be making, able to make sujood. But the people who are faking it, making it in a neglectful way, they didn't care about even standing before Allah, they will not be able to make sujood. Fala yastati'oon, they will not be able. Their back becomes like, subhanAllah, like stone. They cannot bend. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us in these days 
and help us to increase our iman and to advance insha'Allah in our uh, you know steps toward uh, to be nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, so if someone subhanAllah is, is proud and he has the pride of his status in the dunya you know someone is a senior this someone he thinks and uh, someone he's a doctor in these things and really subhanAllah it makes them feel special make them feel special and these people subhanAllah they feel so special that they think like everybody else subhanAllah is is nobody you know and one of the shocking the most shocking thing I ever heard from someone and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him and guide us and forgive him and forgive us subhanAllah uh, it was long term but this person he was like you know very high uh, you know I don't know he thinks that he's very genius I didn't know this person and then when we're talking about the deen and he said something about the Prophet Sallallahu almost a lie it was not you know okay, gathering I will have with this person he said I mean the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he's expert in in deen not like us <laughs> that word subhanallah I mean no comment so this person these people subhanallah when they have like something is like being responsible or you know he had the high degree or like high title he think like subhanallah nobody so it becomes like he, he these people they lose the common sense they lose the common sense so ibn hazm reminded us if you are from these people you feel you feel like you are special you know you have high iq you get you know you know subhanallah you'll be able to have like high degrees and then you are you know level senior title uh, you know you want to be respected and you feel like subhanallah people feel like special type what make you special so ibn hazmi said just think think of the people subhanallah think the people who who are against you maybe they are competitors or maybe the other side they don't like it think of your peers think of your equals the people who save the same title do make them to be great people when many of them are perverse others are feeble others subhanallah are vile so how can you make yourself special when people they share with you the same title for example and they are the worst on this planet Earth? how can you make that's a source of your own pride you see for example someone he becomes a CEO you will be happy to have being special that is you if all the CEO in the world are are salihin are righteous people are they so that's what Ibn Hazm said they are they have they share with you the same thing people true righteous people people with really integrity people with really the true sense of meaning of they know what is the meaning of life they will be really shocked and ashamed to say i want to be like that person it's like today for example people they want to be like actors and they want to be like famous subhanallah how can you want to assimilate yourself or resemble people who really they do not know anything they don't care about you know morality all what they care about subhanallah is their image their appearance their name their subhanallah how much you know they are famous on social medias and everything are these people you want to be like them this is our dua to hellfire our caller inviter a leader and guide to to the wrath of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala someone he looks at pharaoh he said pharaoh oh Pharaoh, he had this and he has this until now people they see what they say for example you see in some documentary how they try to reconstruct you know the palaces of Pharaoh, you know with some you know computer uh, thing and they say the pyramid and how it's a wonder of the world and things and people they say Pharaoh, and then you know the gold that they have and they show the uh, you know the, the the in the museum or or with the thing that they had from all the riches he had can someone dream to be like Pharaoh? To have all that gold? <laughs> you see, there's people they love to be like that. 
So this is, subhanAllah, mimma yustahya minhu. A true believer, he will be like ashamed to say, I want to be like Fir'aun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the beginning of the Quran to the end of Quran, he's cursing Fir'aun and he's telling you he is a leader, a guide. We make them to be a guide calling for hellfire. So Allah, if you will have the whole millions of dollars that he can provide you, you will not follow him because in following him, you're going to disgrace yourself. And you're going to be rejected from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is helpful. That's why Ibn Hazm telling us something here, because when you say someone is proud of having, you know, whatever subhanAllah in the dunya today, they are happy with, they feel like, you know, great about it. A believer should not be feel great about it at all. Because if you feel great because you have much money, Many people, they have more money than you. But there are people, subhanAllah, vile people, feeble people, you know, wretched people, uh, wicked people, وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ قَالَ وَإِن كُنْتَ مَالِكَ الْأَرْضِ كُلِّهَا وَلَا مُخَالِفَ عَلَيْكَ And if you own the whole earth. وَهَذَا بَعِيدٌ جِدًّا فِي الْإِمْكَانِ This is very far to be even a possibility. فَمَا نَعْلَمُ أَحَدًا مَلَكَ مَعْمُورَ الْأَرْضِ كُلَّهَا عَلَىٰ قِلَّتِهِ وَذِيقِ مِسَاحَتِهِ It was impossible and there is no one who was able to, uh, you know, to own the whole earth. Uh, despite the fact it's small, small compared to, to the vast horizon around us. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا أُضِيفَ إِلَى الْفَلَكِ الْمُحِيطِ بِهَا So what do you think when you add all these planets around us and all the constellations? You're still small. You still don't have anything. You don't even own your life. You own the whole earth. And after owning the whole earth, how, how much are you going to get from this earth? Two meters for the grave. That's it. There is someone, they told him, you know, people, people here, the, the U.S., they had it before when they want to have people you know, uh, you know, uh, invest in, in, in land, you know. And in Islam, we call it Ihya al-Mawad. Ihya al-Mawad is if there is a land deserted, if someone will go and plant it, it becomes his, you know, with the condition, of course, in the fiqh al-Islam. It happened here. So there is a person, they told him, you see this land, you can have, you know, as much as you wish from this land. The condition you have from here, Dohr time to Maghrib time. Whenever you, wherever you reach at Maghrib time, that it will be yours. Fair, right? <laughs> Imagine someone is here at Al Amal. They say, you, you travel, you know, face, you know, go like, for example, in direction of the north, and whatever you reach on the north in Maghrib, that will be yours. Tell this person to start to run. SubhanAllah. And not walk and run. He ran, he ran, he ran, and you look at the time, it was from Asr. It's still Maghrib. It's not Maghrib. And then he, like, subhanAllah, he's so exhausted. And he's like pushing and trying to run out of breath. And he looks still maybe 10 minutes for Maghrib. I need to get more space to have more property. <laughs> and just five minutes before Maghrib, he died. <laughs> he killed himself. From all that space that he's been running, he only has two meters that his property in which they dig his grave. That's life, dear brother. That's true life. And we finish with Ibn Samak, what he said to Al Rashid, Al Khalifa Al Rashid, Harun Al Rashid. Qala Ibn Samak li Al Rashid, wa qad da'a bi hadrati bi qadah fihi ma'un li yashrabah. Ibn Samak, he was in the gathering of Al Rashid, which is the Khalifa of Al Mu'minin at that time, and uh, he asked it to uh, to 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 be brought uh, a cup of drinking water. So, Al Samak, he was one of the uh, ulama, Al Arifin, Al Zuhad. He took the uh, the time or the, the the opportunity to remind the Rashid of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because he's a king, and I mean, he's like Subhanallah, Rashid, in, in, in the golden age of the Abbasid Empire. 
فقال يا أمير المؤمنين فلو منعت هذه الشربة بمن بكم كنت ترضى أن تبتاعها قال يا أمير المؤمنين إذا منعت هذه الشربة إذ you will not be able you will not be able to drink this water because this disease سبحان الله you cannot you cannot pass anything قال إن منعت not refuse إن منعت منعت something that is سبحان الله سبحانه وتعالى is inflicted on you to the point that you cannot drink anything you cannot pass anything through this throat that's it سبحان الله فقال فما يا أبي فلو منعت بكم كنت ترضى أن تبتاحها how much will you pay for a sip of water because subhanallah when someone cannot drink he's going to die so here subhanallah you are on the verge of death how much فقال how much would you offer to get it قال my entire kingdom Rashid is fair قال I will give everything I own I give all my entire kingdom to be able to drink the water this cup of water So Imam Samak, he, he took, you know, the advantage to continue in his, you know, deep, profound maw'idha. قال فقال له الرشيد بملك كله قال له يا أمير المؤمنين O Prince of the Believer فلو منعت خروجها منك بكم ترضى أن تفتدي من ذلك If منعت you have been prevented or stopped from getting out this water <laughs> which is means someone is not able subhanallah to to have the urine this is a worse death because if you cannot drink it someone who's going to be dehydrated and things and then he'll die but having water inside you that you cannot get it out well it's it's extreme pain so he didn't say here how much you will offer He said, how much you will ransom yourself with? He said, قَالَ بِمُلْكِ كُلَّهَا I'll give all my kingdom. فَقَالَ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ قَالَ How can you boast of a kingdom which is not worth as much a little urine and a few mouthful of water? Your whole kingdom, its value, little union, and few sips of what? That's the true life. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah, uh, in Surah Ali Imran, He said, uh, If the person had the full capacity of earth, of gold, To ransom himself with, it will not be accepted from him. مل الأرض ذهب، مل الأرض ذهب. Can you imagine? If there is, I mean, you cannot even calculate how much this wealth that this person will have if he have the capacity of earth in gold. Yet, it is nothing. And you're not able with it, able to save yourself from the doom of the hellfire or the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us with this maw'idha and help us to be more driven toward the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these blessed days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to accept our repentance and to make us, insha'Allah, from الذاكرين كثيرا والذاكرات and elevate our ranks among the writers inshallah ta'ala again tomorrow from 3 to 5 we will have the youth event rightful pride and self esteem it's interactive you know if a young one if they come they are welcome but it's interactive where we do groups and in these groups every group they